Welcome to the Theater Podcast, intimate personal conversations with theater's biggest names. As always, I'm Alan Seals. And as sometimes, I'm Jillian Ackman. <laughs> Who else would you be? Um, I want to be Izzy and Caitlin. <laughs> oh, I want to be Izzy and Caitlin. I just want to... I want to just be a fly on the wall and watch the conversations they have when the it's just room. the two of them. This episode is with the wonderful Isabel McCalla and Caitlin Kinnanen, and we recorded this episode actually right before the Tony Awards. So no matter what happens, we are incredibly proud of Caitlin and the prom and everyone who was nominated this year, but we don't know who's won the Tonys yet. <laughs> oh, this episode with, with Izzy and Caitlin, absolutely phenomenal. This was actually very specifically requested once we announced we were going to do the prom takeover month for May. Uh several people wrote us and were like, please do Izzy with Caitlin and Caitlin with Izzy. Izzy. And we got to add the two of them together. They're awesome. And boy, they did not disappoint. No, they reminded me of me and my sister and how like just we talk nonsense forever together. They they seem like they're actual like close, like they're friends. They're going to be friends for the rest of their lives. Oh, and yeah. it is very apparent. I think I think they are actual soulmates. Yeah. they They trust each other implicitly. They support each other both on and off stage. And I think they're both going through the same point in their lives where both of them have just been thrust into this spotlight mm-hmm. and like they're they're mid-20s and thrust into the spotlight. And this is the first time ever that like they haven't had to struggle for a little while. Yeah. And they're like, what do, what do I do? How do I adult now? Adulting is so hard. Adulting is very hard. They're doing so great. I'm so proud of them. Yeah, they're they're the two of them together. Like, just listen to this episode, everybody. It's so incredible. And there's one particular story, Jillian. You were just telling me that was your favorite. Was in the middle of a show, Caitlin actually called out. Yeah, she was having a panic attack, and she had she was saying she was able to breathe through some of them before. And she's very open about mental health and and her depression, anxiety Izzy, Izzy too. Yeah, yeah, Talks about therapy. Yeah. So, um, but she. She started a show and she was having a bit of a panic attack. She got through the first act and she started the second act and said, you know what? I need to stop. I know my body. I know myself. And this is something I can't compromise on right now. And the, through the magic of Broadway, the magnificent understudy came on and they completed the show. And she knew it was the right choice. And she was not afraid to say, hey, this is what I need right now. Yeah. I really admire that. Yeah, me too. Um, so everybody... Before we get into the episode, please take a moment and visit us online at thetheaterpodcast.com. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at theater underscore podcast. And actually, we just created an additional Patreon tier, a lower tier. Mm -hmm. So we moved the benefits of the lowest tier to this new lower tier. And then the $5 tier that was the lowest now now gets you advanced access. um, So if you... Go to thetheaterpodcast.com slash Patreon, and if you pledge $5 a month, you will get to know who we're interviewing in advance, and you will be able to submit questions that may be answered by your favorite Broadway people. Oh, yeah. Everybody, please enjoy this episode with Isabel McCalla and Caitlin Kinnanen. Here you go. One, two, three. Today, I have the absolute pleasure of being able to record another multi-guest episode. My first guest made her Broadway debut last year as Jasmine in the production of Aladdin after coming off the tour of the same name and now stars as Alyssa in The Prom. My second guest made her Broadway debut in 2008 at the age of 16 and is now nominated for a 2019 Tony Award for her performance as Emma, also in The Prom. Isabel McCalla and Caitlin Kinnanen, welcome to the Theater Podcast. Way to say both of our names correctly. Yeah, awesome. Nailed it. People don't get it? Oh, yeah. No. What do they say? Ma- Michaela. Or McCalla. Michaela? Or McCalla. McCalla doesn't bother me as much really? because here's the thing. Because my family's Haitian. And uh. when I'm around their family, they go, they yell at each other, Ah, Makala. So they say Makala. So I'm like, my dad says Makala. So I don't really, I say Makala, but it doesn't bother me when people say Makala because it kind of sounds it's similar. It's like a combo. It's uh. a combo. And people just say yeah. all versions of what Kinnanen could be. What is Kinnanen? What, what, it's Finnish. Uh, Finnish. Mm-hmm. And it's actually a very common Finnish last name. It's the equivalent of like Smith in America. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, that shows how not worldly traveled I am, I guess. I mean, I have never been, so I just like know that. That's like a random fact. Getting some Finnish culture today. Ask me anything else and I will not know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Where is Finland? It's a country. <laughs> 
They sing about it in spam a lot. Did I get it? Yes. Did I get yes, it? Yes, you win. Ding, ding. Yay. <laughs> Congratulations <laughs> on uh, seven Tony nominations Thank for you. the prom. Ooh. The show The show is incredible. Uh, I, I, I love that it is, I guess, pretty much the only original show on Broadway at, mm-hmm. at the moment yeah. being not, with all these nominations. Yeah. Um, and we'll get into that. But on the podcast, normally we talk about your your humble beginnings where you grew up. And yeah. I want to get, of course, you, Caitlin, you didn't come from Finland. Well, you came <laughs> from Finland, but you didn't Many come from Finland. Many generations Your DNA ago. comes from yeah, Finland. Your DNA comes from Finland. Yeah. But yeah, let's start, let's start where you grew up. Who wants to go first? Izzy, go. Oh, God. Okay. Um, I was born uh, <laughs> uh, in New York City, actually. Yeah. And yeah, uh, Lenox Hill Hospital. And I lived in Queens for the first like five years of my life uh, with uh, my mom and dad, tiny apartment. And then we moved to Rockland County, New York, which is the poor man's Westchester, um, <laughs> <laughs> across the Hudson River. Uh, yeah, 45 minutes north. Um, and I kind of did the majority of my growing up there um, until I went to the University of Michigan for college. Uh, did four years there. And um, I studied abroad in London for a semester. And I then know I know that. I did. <gasps> yeah. I went to Lambda. It was really awesome. That's amazing. It was really fun. And then, um, yeah, after graduation, we showcased in New York, and I've kind of been here ever since. Fun. Woo-hoo. And Caitlin, yeah. you're from Seattle. Yeah, I'm from outside of Seattle, Kameno Island, technically, um, which is a actually like a relatively large island north of Seattle, um, like compared to Manhattan. It's huge, but there's like no one there. Um, so I grew up there, and I uh, grew up doing theater in Seattle and Issaquah, Washington, and that's kind of like all I did. I was homeschooled, and I just did theater. And then when I was 15, I auditioned for Spring Awakening, and I ended up booking that. And I moved out to New York when I was 16 with my mom. Um, my dad and my sister stayed in Washington, and they had a long-distance relationship for two and a half years and sacrificed so much so Aww. that I could follow my dreams. Um, but yeah, so I've been living in New York for 11 years now, and it's— Amazing, but yeah. So I just kind of been both, back and forth. So what was what was uh, what were your like both of you? Your parents were they supportive of? The, obviously, Caitlin, like your parents, yeah, very supportive. Mine they were moved across. incredibly supportive, yeah, like and, from day one. Yeah. So Izzy, did you have like sort of an equal amount of support, or are you like screw these guys? I'm doing my thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's kind of a mix of both. Uh, like wh- growing up, uh, academia was very important in my family. Um, and my mom actually was an actor. Both my parents are bomb dancers, professional bomb dancers. And um, they just say, there's no money in the arts. So uh, they very, and my mother uh, was an actor for a time until she switched to dance and knows personally how difficult this profession is. Um, so she really urged me away from it for the longest time and wanted me desperately to be a nuclear physicist. Um, that no joke? clearly, d- well, it was a joke, but she really wanted, I mean, she, she met, she like taught some nuclear physicist and they were like, they know what happened at area 50. What? One. Thank wow. You. <laughs> so you're clearly not a nuclear physicist. Um, <laughs> that was incredible. Yeah. But she, 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 she just wanted to know the secrets, but also wanted me to make money. Um, <laughs> well, if you were going to know the secrets, you wouldn't be able to tell her. Exactly. Ugh, just, she doesn't get it. Anyway, <laughs> um, but uh, th- they were also very adamant. They were like, if you really want this, you got to train really hard for it because, you know, it's not worth it to do it unless you can actually succeed. Um, so even up till like my senior year, I wasn't of high school. I wasn't sure whether I wanted to go to school for um, academics or for theater. And luckily, I got into the University University of Michigan, which kind of gave me the best of both worlds, so mm-hmm. I could get my BFA training and also take you know an English lit class with physics majors. You know, so it was kind of the best of both worlds for me. And once I had gotten through all of that, um, now my mom, like even though she's like kind of my biggest critic, she's also my biggest fan. So they're very supportive of me now. Um, and honestly, once I got into school, they were very supportive as long because I kind of just with all of their warnings and feedback. I still wanted it and I wanted to make this dream happen. And I was like, yeah, I know it will be hard sometimes, but like that's a worthy sacrifice for me. Hmm. So yeah, so they're very supportive. Just you, took some cautionary tales <laughs> to get there. Do you have any siblings, either of you? I yes. Do. Yeah. We both do. We do. I have an older sister who's a photographer. She's awesome. Has she come and photographed you? You get oh, her to do yeah. some production she does, stills. She does all of my headshots. She's amazing. Oh, she, really? she hates doing them because I get so angry. <laughs> um, but yeah, I force her to take my headshots. She's very talented. 
She's very good at yeah. what she does. Julia Kinnanen, follow her on Instagram. You know. Kinnanen, it's Finnish. <laughs> it's, yeah. Which is on the planet of Earth. Yes, it is. Where? Who knows? Who knows? Somewhere <laughs> over there. I'm pointing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have a younger brother. He's uh, going to be a senior in college. He's out in California. He's an applied mathematics major, but is also an incredible actor. And he he's also very handsome. I feel like the listener <laughs> should know that. Yeah, follow him at JC McCalla on Instagram. <laughs> you won't be disappointed. Um, yeah, and he dances hip hop. He's like, he's a go getter. He's you know, he's like, oh, I'm going to make money, but I also want to act. So you know, who knows what he's going to do? But he's very talented. I heard um, this morning actually. I was listening to Armchair Expert by Dax Shepard. Love that podcast. And he's yeah. interviewing um, uh, Will Ferrell, and and something that Will's dad gave him was it, it was the advice it, when when Will was like dad I think I want to do this comedy thing <laughs> and uh this it reminded Izzy what you said a second ago um about about what your parents told you about going into this uh reminded me of this and he said uh, his dad told him I'm horrible at telling stories apparently <laughs> his dad told him that you should do it if you're going to be happier failing at mm-hmm. that than su- succeeding at something else yeah yeah that's a very succinct way to put it. <laughs> which, is, which is yeah. interesting because your parents were like, well, you got to you gotta succeed at it. Like it yeah, was, it was well, a little bit of a... Uh, a little bit of both. Like yeah. the knowledge that you will fail yeah. and yeah. that's okay, but it, and it's very difficult to succeed. So just the knowledge, yeah, I, I think it's, their philosophy is wrapped up in that thesis statement that Will Ferrell's dad so eloquently put that I <laughs> took a long, a long <laughs> longer to say. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, I think that is, that is truth to it because when, when we all of us enter this field, there is no guarantee for no, anything. None. And I think if you come in with expectations, you will be sorely disappointed regardless yeah. of what happens. So it's kind of having that resilience and vulnerability to be open to the possibilities of what can happen because mm-hmm. your life can literally change in a day. Yeah. Yeah, in this field. Yeah, so it it was, oh, he added on to that saying that, sorry, I just, I love Dak Shepard. Um, yeah, he added on to that by, by saying that uh, it's, a lot of talent. I mean, mm-hmm. so you're going to be good at it, right? So like yeah. his dad knew he was good at it, but the rest of it is all luck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you just have to be the right place at the right time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like, I think it's a combination of luck and hard work that like you have to be talented. You also have to work your ass off mm-hmm. to continue to be good at it. But right. then also luck is a huge factor that people don't really think about. Yeah. Because there are plenty of incredibly talented, hardworking people who don't get the success that, Mm. you know, we've been lucky to have. Yeah. Um, And, you know, I think the important thing, too, is, like, comparison is kind of the death. Comparison is the thief of of joy. Exactly. The thief thief of joy. The thief of joy. Comparison is the thief of joy. Um, (laughs) That was beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. But, yeah, that kind of – I had one of my professors in college. He was brilliant. He said, you can't move forward when you're looking to the side, which I always loved. Yeah. um, Because it's so true. You can't – like, there's just – absolutely no way that you will find and be able to hone your craft to the best of your own ability mm-hmm. and find your happiness in that while you're comparing yourself to never, you know, somebody who's the same age or maybe looks like you or not, you know, it doesn't, it just like, there's no rhyme or reason to this. And again, you're setting us yourself up for failure. Yeah. If you do compare. Right. So Caitlin, you, you came over here in 08, you said, yes. And you did spring awakening. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, I was looking, you know, of course, researching for this. The next Broadway credit was Bridges of Madison County mm-hmm. in 2014. Uh-huh. So talking about <laughs> you know, luck and perseverance uh-huh. and struggle and stuff, uh-huh. what happened in those six years? Um, many things. Um, I went and I did the national tour of Spring Awakening. Oh, my God. I did the national tour of Next to Normal after Spring Awakening. Um, but, like, in between that, I did, like, a few film and TV things. I did a lot of readings. I did a lot of workshops that never saw the light of day. Mm. Um, And I just kept going and kept auditioning and kept showing up and kept being the one who got told no over and over and over again. But I just stayed. And here I am. (laughs) (laughs) You know, and it was like, I think actually like, it's funny because I don't think of... um, like that time gap as like the one that was challenging. I think of the time gap between Bridges and Prom as the one that was like Mm. the most challenging um, because Prom made it so, I've been working on Prom for 
four and a half years. And within that four and a half years, we were supposed to come to Broadway three times, I think. Um, and be, so it was like, we're going, clear your schedules. Oh, wait, we're not going. So like, good luck. Put stuff back on your exactly. schedules Exactly. And so there was like a four and a half year period of me having this job, but not having it because we actually weren't doing it. So there was a four and a half year time period of like me being a nanny and dog walking and like being on Medicaid and like almost applying for food stamps because I was trying to make ends meet between Broadway shows. And people don't think about that. They say, it's actually interesting because I remember talking to Fernell, who's one of our ensemble members about it. He like overheard me talking um, at a um, talk back after one of our shows and saying that like people assume that like you book your Broadway show and after that it's easy. And it's just like one Broadway show after another. And it's like, no, I booked... Uh, Bridges in Madison County and then didn't have another Broadway show for five years. So like, what, you got to figure out how to make ends meet between those things. And as Izzy has said, theater is not a lucrative um, profession all the time. And so doing like little out of town gigs does not necessarily pay your rent. So you got to figure out how to do it, but also be doing what you love and finding creative outlets, but then also surviving. Right. I don't know if any of that makes sense. No, it makes yeah. it makes a lot of sense, and it and it's I see that with with a lot of people from my personal history it, is that they they moved to New York because they had to act and they had mm-hmm. they, and they just started struggling and then like they've got the flexible jobs are often yep. the ones that keep you out at night. So mm-hmm. then you can't yes. get up for the six a.m. Yes. ensemble calls or yeah. whatever mm-hmm. case. If you don't have your equity card, you can't yeah. go to a you can't book a slot. Yep. And it, it seems like this horrible cycle. Yes. That at the same time, when it succeeds, is the best thing ever. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, uh, like Izzy, do you, you're you're a little bit younger, I think. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's uh, a child. So, I'm two no, years not. younger than you. <laughs> no, I just like giving you shit. <laughs> so you made your Broadway debut in 2018, mm-hmm. and you did the tour of that in, in 2017. I right? did. You, I did. Were you with Mary Antonini on that one? Yeah. yeah. I love my life. Oh. She's the best done, human in the world. This is our fourth contract together. Oh, really? She was my. I worked with her in my first professional job out of school. We did West Side Story at Oslo Repertory Theater, and she was Anita, and I understudied her. And then we did the Out of Town Triad of the Prom, and then we went on the Aladdin tour together. And now we're back on Broadway with the Prom. Um, we, we joke about it that it's written into our contracts that we have to work together. We are not allowed to do shows that the other. Oh, I, lo- I love her. She, she's like my sister. I uh, love her so much. She and Teddy and Becca, I interviewed them mm-hmm. on this podcast too. Yeah, you did. Yeah, the three of them. They're incredible. Incredible <laughs> together. Oh, they're so mm-hmm. great. Um, so you had you had that in 2017. Came here in 2018. You were Jasmine on Broadway, and and like, do you did either of you when you started to get like these roles and you saw them coming? Did you sort of get any sort of uh, a false or I guess a, a sense of of like what you were saying of. Now I've the next thing is just gonna fall in my lap no. and I can go spend all my money no. and it's gonna keep coming. <laughs> no. I'm learning how to deal with money right now currently, but um no, because there's actually that uh, my fear is different. For me, I started I have I have a heavy dance background and I um thought for years that I would dance in ensembles and understudy principal roles and like that was gonna how was going to be how I made money. And Casey kind of plucked me out. Mm-hmm. Um, and Casey Nicola. Casey yeah. Nicola gave me this incredible opportunity of playing Jasmine um, in the national tour. And I, my fear actually grew because now I'm like, okay, now I'm at a higher level. Hopefully I want to maintain this level, but that means opportunities are going to be fewer and farther between. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, even now I have this fear that like, oh my God, am I ever going to work again after this? Like I want this show to run forever. And yeah, I, the fear never goes away. The fear away. never goes away. I mean, yeah. Because this business is so unpredictable. Right. And like you can be told, yeah, you're going to Broadway tomorrow. And then tomorrow be told, Hopefully. actually, no, we're not going to do that. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. I had um, actually one of my, like a contract for another show I was on, they had offered me a... Broadway contract and the next day took it away from me. <gasps> what? Yeah. So like, it's, wait, like, yeah. Oh my God. And it just, it, you can never put all of your eggs in one basket in this industry because yeah. they can be 
t- ripped away yeah. from you at any moment. And that like, I think is like the most anxiety like that I get is being like, I can't rely on anything in my life. So yeah. cool. That's why you kind of have to be good with going with the flow. And when you have these big jobs, it's and like, so your money is not yeah. really real because you, you oh, got to save it for the time that you are yeah. employed and can't yeah. work. <laughs> like truly my, like at the end of when bridges closed, because bridges again, like we ran for three months yeah, and that was it. And so it was like, okay, well I have, I luckily like saved this money and that money like made it so I could pay my rent for a while. But then after that, it, it, money goes away very fast so in New York quickly. City. Oh my Even God. if you're not spending it, like truly, if you are like bare bones, just paying your rent and buying food, mm-hmm. money goes fast because rent is expensive. So expensive. Mm-hmm. And utilities too, especially God, in the summertime where they see, I mean, like there's just so many ways it goes. Yeah. I'm working yeah. with a financial advisor now who's trying to like, I'm trying to stabilize <laughs> and get a plan for adulting together. I'm not. You're trying I'm to adult so hard. I'm trying to adult it. so hard because I'm so good at avoiding it. And um, she says that, but she's like the most put together human being ever. I don't know about that, but it's I, true. I'm trying. I'm, what do you mean? I'm, I'm, give I'm me an example. Succeeding. She's like, just like the most eloquently spoken, smart individual who like knows what she <laughs> wants in life. My shit no, but it does. Like you so clearly know what you want out of your life and you are very driven to get it and you are taking all of the correct steps to get it and like putting your well-being ahead of other people's nonsense and like that to me is being a successful adult so like gold star i love you babe i just air high-fived her i hope you could hear that in the background (laughs) now we're holding hands we are i like narrating what's going on for the viewers (laughs) now we're waving them back and forth in a gentle concert concert motion yeah (laughs) we like to harmonize really badly together too it sounds really not good yeah yeah Yeah. we're, we're talented our favorite thing to do is sing the beginning of fallen by alicia keys and, and how does that go? It goes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even. What, I keep on falling in and out of love with you. <laughs> <laughs> we can't rip. Wait, but okay, that's another thing that you lie about. Izzy claims that no. she can't rip, and she actually can. Whereas no, I, you can too. I cannot. No, you, no, that is we a have lie. like you actual can. proof. Can you do one of those things where you like splice into this conversation what I'm talking about? Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because sure. it's the best. So the Bridges of Madison County cast recording. <laughs> we, it's my favorite story to tell. We recorded it all in one room with the band and the cast all like in the same space without any barriers put up. It was the most incredible experience. But because of that, it was really. Um, challenging to fix mistakes and there's one part during state road 21 where it's supposed to be uh, five more hours till the final judging i can hold it all together and i will not cry on the cast recording it's not that it's like <laughs> and i will not cry <laughs> <laughs> because that to me is a riff like a three note like descending scale yeah. is a riff and i can't do it <laughs> it's horrendous so this, please you put are, that you in right here. you were acting in that, in that part of the song you were so overtaken but you were not sure. cry you were trying not to yeah, cry totally that's like, what I was yeah. going for yeah. Yeah. the intention cry. came through <laughs> Babe, you can do it better than you think you can. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I love watching. The I'm two nominated of you just for a Tony. Rip. She's amazing. <laughs> and that, she deserves it. Has that set in? No. <laughs> you posted a really great picture today. I did. I posted an Instagram story, not story, a uh, post today of me just sobbing. <laughs> like the, the day she found out, the moment she found out. It's beautiful. I like to keep it real. So it's just a picture of me crying. So you you started crying and then just selfied it while you were crying. Yeah, because like um this is a like kind of a depressing story, but actually like one of there was a year that um oh my god, what is his name? David Hyde Pierce did a um I forget what he was presenting. I think he was presenting like a lifetime achievement thing or maybe just making a speech at the Tonys, but he spoke about Alzheimer's and that people always say, I'll never forget this moment. And you actually don't know that because 
anyone can get Alzheimer's at any point in their life. And so you say, I'll never forget this, but in reality, you probably will. And so there are like certain things in my life that I document just in case oh I God. get Alzheimer's. And that was one <laughs> and of And that the- thinking you had. <laughs> and that was um, one of the moments where I was like... <laughs> That sounds so much more depressing than it is. But, like, I probably won't get Alzheimer's. But, like, I might not remember this day because, like, I still have a lot of life left. And I want to remember this moment. So I took a picture. I took a selfie of my face. And now I, like, have an image that, like, recalls all of the emotions that I was doing. And I posted it on Instagram. But I didn't talk about Alzheimer's when I posted it. So with your future lover, are you going to give your Instagram (laughs) handle to them so this can be your own personal notebook? Like oh, they I'm just sure. Like every yeah. day we'll have to yeah, reset. Yeah, yeah. Like, but and like that's the why it's like they just show you the pictures. One of those of like moments. cool new trends on Instagram is like only having like a couple photos posted, and I'm like, nah. My Instagram is like a <laughs> what? full. Wait, what, what is this trend? There's like people who like only ever have like 15 Instagram posts, and they go oh. back and like delete them as oh, they go. No, I don't like that. My Instagram goes back to like 2011. Yes. Peak Caitlyn Kinnan in, in her like most destructive I years, see the first and they're post. just horrible. It's really atrocious. Yeah, but that's good. My favorite, Caitlin Kennanen posts. Oh my God, oh no. they give me so much life. Please <laughs> scroll through her Instagram feed and you will see uh, the I woke up like this. Oh, posts. yeah. I haven't done those in a really long you time. You haven't, I need but they're to really good. I mean, this, back. the one today was kind of. It, it was, was pretty much like that, but like, I was crying. Yeah. Um, but the, when she had longer hair, <laughs> it was literally just like how she would wake up with like kind of half of her face with makeup on still, <laughs> hair sticking up in a corner and just like staring dead into the camera. Like I yeah. woke up like this. I'm re- it's, they're so good because I, it brings truth. Like the yeah. reality of life. I mean, I love it. Social media is a very interesting thing for me because I yeah. find a lot of fault with it. And I really despise people who project. Um, I don't despise. Despise is not the right word. I don't understand people who project um, the perfect image of their lives Mm -hmm. online and then you run into them in real life and they're like, actually, my life is miserable. This is what I'm going through. And I'm like, why don't you talk about that? Because everyone is going through that and because you're like putting out this perfect image of yourself, people think you are perfect and they try to live up to that. No one is perfect. It gives everyone anxiety. Exactly. So like with my Instagram, I do post like perfect moments of my life, but I also try to be very honest and very upfront when I am struggling or am going through something. And I do, I woke up like this photos because everyone always posts the like beautiful, like, I'm wearing makeup, but it doesn't look like I'm wearing makeup. And I'm like, I'm wearing makeup from last night that I forgot to wipe (laughs) off my face. And I look gorgeous. I that enjoy was that. Yeah. a lot of word vomit. Sorry. No, that's like, important word vomit. It I is important word vomit. I think vomit. like especially now it's, it needs to be an ever evolving conversation mm-hmm. because we're still trying to figure out yeah, you know, the bounds of it and like how, and especially cuz we're in a position now where like right. if we you do have, have followers who are looking up to us. Right. We are like oh, Yeah, I was going to bring that up now. Yeah. People in a yeah. position of quote unquote power because of this show. And so we have like all of these young kids following us on Instagram and I never want to give them false hope of perfection. Yeah. Because that's not mm. realistic. No, it's really not. And as we know, my mind works in horrible ways where I think everyone is going to end up with Alzheimer's. So <laughs> I think the advice- I really like to put that into the world. If you take nothing out of this podcast, <laughs> take that. You should document all of your ugly I'm moments sorry. because you will lose your mind one day. I kind of love the ugly moments. <laughs> I think yeah. putting it that way is like really accurate. They're like, it might not be Alzheimer's, <laughs> but you will lose your mind. Good I, Lord. I mean, at some point. <laughs> it's already happening to me. You know <sighs> this. I've cried like 17 times this past it two happens. weeks. This past hour. Isabel has been. <gasps> you said my full name. I did because this is a serious moment. Oh my God. <sighs> she has put up with so much bullshit from me over the last month and a half. And she's an angel from heaven who is the most graceful, caring, wonderful human being who I love and appreciate to the moon and back. I love you. Because she holds my hand when I'm crying and then doesn't get mad at me when I yell at her not to touch me when I'm <laughs> sobbing in my dressing room. Oh. Or at least she doesn't voice the cheese. <laughs> so did you, did you know each other before prom? No. No. Really? mm so you've just become soulmates, yeah, or basically. you found your soulmate. Yeah, babe. Yeah, yeah. babe. 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 Babe.
I'm so uncomfortable. <laughs> that's part of our relationship too. I'd like to try to make her as uncomfortable as possible. And I think that's vice versa too. Oh, 100%. Yeah, we. She discovered this thing during tech that um, my cheeks are in st- extremely uh, uh, flexible. Like, was that right what you would now? Say? She's like pulling her cheeks apart. Oh my god! Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so we often can be find intertwined and just holding odd parts of each other's bodies. Mm-hmm. Um, not in a sexual way, just in a Why weird, you take it there? way. Because everything I take, is, <laughs> <laughs> everything is sexual. <laughs> not really, but I, that's why I said it's not in a sexual way. Because people will take it there if I don't say it's not. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't quite know where to go from there. That's nope. okay. Um, we can go back to social media if you are like transition. Ask transition. another question. Ah, go, go, prom, go, prom, go. Prom. Um, yeah. So the people looking up to you, they what? <laughs> tell me about. Thank you for taking it back to that specific moment. <laughs> people looking up to you, not in a sexual way. Um, <laughs> oh no. The 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 audience feedback. <laughs> you, you're. Tell me, I'm trying to. I'm trying to bring you back uh-huh, to a moment here. We are. Tell yeah. me, tell me about what you're hearing in getting in the mail and what you're hearing at the stage door, and you know, uh, seeing you're getting feedback that people are seeing themselves represented mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in a way that they hadn't previously yes. previously been seen. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Really, is just that. It's all of these kids and young adults and full adults reaching out and saying whether it's at the stage door via fan mail on Instagram all of all of the ways they can get yeah. in contact with us just saying that they feel seen and yeah. they feel heard and represented like they haven't before and that means so much and especially because we're doing a piece of musical theater you know like we're doing a musical we're doing a musical comedy and yet we still are having this impact on people's yeah. lives that's positive. And we're representing these LGBT youth characters in a way that they've never been represented before on stage. Yeah. And that is so special and unique and needed. Yeah. The fact that this has not happened before to me is ridiculous. Horrible. But that's why I think theater is so important because it can be a piece of social activism mm-hmm. like our show is. Um, and the fact that it, it like starts conversations between parents and children about yeah. sexuality and their own sexuality. And, you know, it, it, we get stories all the time that the show gave these kids the courage to come out or mm-hmm. they want to come out now or want to address who they are and be comfortable with who they are. Oh, and even better, not even better, but, it, you know, as a added bonus, we get the parents who come and say, mm-hmm. I didn't understand until now. And I'm so sorry. Or those bullies who think twice now about yeah. not hmm. calling people gay, you know, as an insult. Because, like, what does that mean? You're just saying that they mean it as stupid. What you're actually saying is, you know, that gay is stupid. And like, you, so you yeah. try to rework their thinking. And the amount of reflection that is happening from the audience members, I think, is the best yeah. that it can possibly be. Yeah. Do you have a story that, that stands out? I do. Yeah, I do too. Go ahead. Um, mine is, I I don't stage door very often. I have a lot of social anxiety and it's hard for me to stage door. And so I don't do it very often. But when I do, I try to be as present as possible. And there was one day where I was actually stage dooring and this girl was behind the barricade and she like grabbed onto my shoulders in a very gentle way, not in a like alarming way but she like held on to my shoulders and she said my mom is behind me I haven't come out to her but I'm a lesbian and I don't know what to tell her but I just want to say thank you and just like tears in her eyes like being so honest with me so close to me and yet so close to her mother behind her telling me these things and it just we get so many moments like that and it's so overwhelming and so beautiful and like Mm. heartbreaking and touching and like all of these things and emotions wrapped up into one. And it's just, that's always the one that like sticks with me the most. It's just just a sweet 13 year old, 14 year old girl being like, I'm gay and I haven't told the woman who is standing directly behind me. Wow. Yeah. Is it your story? Um, Yeah, that stuff like that. And then also just last week, I think it was this, <clears throat> our house manager brought me to meet this girl who literally the curtain came down and she turned to her mother and said, mom, I'm gay. And she you wanted to thank us. And she was, she was like, I was watching Alyssa Green, the song I sing, and she was like, everything she's saying is how I feel, <laughs> which is a testament to the writers. Yeah. Um, 
this feeling of, you know, having to be someone you're not in order to please the people that you love and you lose sight of yourself because of that. But th- seeing Emma go through it and Alyssa go through it, what they go through helped her realize that she is not alone and that she can do this if she just trusts the people around her to lo- love her and embraces who she really is. So she luckily had a wonderful mother who was like, that's okay. That's amazing. <laughs> and like hugged her. And so I got to meet the daughter and the mother and that's you know, incredible. I'm sure the mom had, the way she acted, I'm sure she kind of knew, but like the fact that this show gave her the courage to do that right, as the curtain came in was just wow. unbelievable. That's incredible. Yeah. I, it's, I was thinking, Caitlin, when you were saying your story that, you know, the, 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 the person, the girl grabbed you and was like, thank you for telling the story. Yeah. Like, do people have a hard time separating the actor from the role? And, and I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's actually, it's, it's, it, this whole experience has been very um, eye-opening is not the right word, um, like enlightening, I guess I could say, um, as to uh, actor-fan relationships. Most of the time it's fine, but there are circumstances where it does get like sticky and tricky and they think we're one in the same and we are and we're not, you know? Like there are some things that I identify very strongly with Emma and I think we are very alike in some ways, but then we're very not alike in other ways. And there are some fans who like only want to see you as Mm -hmm. Emma Mm -hmm. or Alyssa or whoever you are playing. Um, And it's weird and that's, I don't know, it's it's been a weird learning experience for me of how do I differentiate who yeah. I actually am and how do I express Caitlin's thoughts versus this character I play. And like, I, I, I'm so like honored and privileged to be playing such an amazing character who is so awesome in her own right. And so it's, I don't know, it's just like, I then ha- feel like I have to like step up and be as awesome as her in my day to day life. And then I'm like, well, I'm not, it's just, it's, there's so many like different elements that go into it that are all so challenging and difficult and yeah it's 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 weird it's hard for me but emma, like good yeah emma, emma and emma and Alyssa are written to be great they're written yes. to be awesome characters so so why do you why do you beat yourself up for being a real person hmm. i don't know cuz I, I don't know it's I, th- I think it goes back to like we are put on this we're put in this position where people look up to us and i don't want to let anybody down you know, and especially this community and this group of young individuals who are looking up to something to be their like beacon of hope in mm-hmm. life. Yeah. I don't ever want to be the one who like crushes their dreams, you know, because that sucks. Yeah. I think there's something also to be said for the fact that though, like you can't, as playing these roles, we have become advocates, you know, for yeah. this cause as rightfully so. And we're very happy to um, accept the responsibility that comes along with that. But the important thing to remember too is that you can't not you can't stand for anything without detractors, without people wanting to tear you down. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, so that is difficult to sh- like um, push all the negativity away and remember why we are doing this. And I think mm-hmm. it also goes back to our social media platforms and what why I think what we both try to do is similarly to the characters written in the show. Women, like there, we luckily have writers that are writing women that are diverse and are varied and complex people, and that aren't just one stereotype. Yeah, and I think we try to show that in our daily lives yes. with our social media too, to be like, hey, we have those days where we look fly as hell, <laughs> and other days when you know the shit hits the fan and we're goofy and we don't take ourselves so seriously, yeah. or we do and we struggle with whatever. But it's to show that like. I can be sexy and smart and dumb sometimes and clumsy and irreverent and, you know, all of these things and fight for the causes that I find important. It's not like just because I believe one thing, I can't act in another way. Yeah. And I think that's important to keep presenting, Mm -hmm. at least for me. And, uh, you know, I think we agree with that. Yeah. 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 I I, I also want to add in that I think a healthy dose of, of, of support, emotional support, either from friends, you two have each other, yeah, which is incredible, God. or professionally, <laughs> I think in this country, therapy is very, it's un- the, it, it's taboo. the best, but yeah, it is taboo. It shouldn't yeah. be. It really shouldn't I don't, be. I don't understand it. It's ridiculous. I mean, because I, for balance with this hectic, crazy life Good that Lord. we have, it's the one thing that keeps us sane. I fully, I will tell you this. Um, I, I, I don't anticipate winning 
this Sunday. Um, but like, I do have a list of people just in case who I will be thanking. And my therapist is on that list. Yeah. 100%. So yeah. there's that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it should be like I, I celebrated that you have a safe space yes. to go in and just let go of all the bullshit and just drop the facade and be like, my therapist said this to me the other day, which kind of blew my mind. And I'm still talking. I tell everybody because I think it's so great. She, I was just talking about what I thought I was supposed to be talking about, like my days, what was happening. Yeah. And she stopped me and she goes, you know, you don't have to entertain me, right? Ooh. Yeah. And that hit me like a ton of bricks. Yeah. And so since then, I've kind of been re-examining. It's like, even yeah. if you feel like you're being your most authentic self, there's always something yeah. else that maybe you're not in tune with that you need to, you know, keep, keep working on. And I think having that you know, other person, the yeah. mirror reflecting, you know, yeah. if you will, is really great to work yeah. through all the craziness. Yeah. I'm glad she said that. That's that's very helpful just in general. I It blew right. my mind. I right. will never forget that. I mean, just, uh, she's amazing. My therapist, one of the things that she's told me that I am like so reliant on now <laughs> is that she said I'm a baby adult in the way of like... <laughs> In the way of like, I am an adult, but there's still so much to figure out, you know? Like, just because I'm a 27-year-old woman who presents having her shit together doesn't mean that there is still so much more life ahead of me. And I like, right now, I'm focused so solely on like the now that it's like, oh, well, if this doesn't happen, it won't ever happen again. And she's like, no, you are a baby adult. You still have so much left of your adult life. Like, you're fine. It's really not as heavy as what your therapist said, but it's been very helpful No, but helpful that's a real thing. Me. Well, because I think there's also easy to think that we have everything figured out and no. we get how this world works and we get how life works. And I kind of like being called out <laughs> for my yeah. own shit to be like, nah, you, there's a lot more you don't know than you yeah. do. And I think being open to that and like the more open, I, I think – think I don't know for me life is easier to cope with when I am receptive to the idea that so much can happen that I have no control over well it's, again it's luck yeah yeah it's either luck and it's also it, yeah. like not putting my entire worth into my job right so that like how I do you not, do that I'm working on it it's not <laughs> easy but it's it is a practice it is yeah that's something that I have to like meditate on and work on with myself because it doesn't come easy. It's not, I am trying not to make Alyssa Green in the prom my everything. And that's very difficult, but it's the truth. Well, how much? That is so not where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll get there. I'm not there either. I'm just like, I, I know that's something You're I have like to work on. You're at least like working towards it. <laughs> Well, do you do you have a lot of anxiety in general? So much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I've been um, struggling. I don't think struggling is the right word. I think I have been learning with anxiety and depression since I was sixteen, um, and it's it ebbs and flows. And sometimes I am not anxious and I am more depressed. Sometimes I am more anxious and less depressed. Sometimes I'm a lot of both right now. <laughs> <laughs> that time, <laughs> um, but yeah, it just it uh, it's an ever ever changing thing, a chemical imbalance in my brain that I'm totally cool with, but it's an interesting thing to deal with. Something that I realized about myself after, or in the middle of talking with Patty Muran about her own yeah. struggles mm -hmm. with, with anxiety was she said something that resonated with me really hard. It was, it was and I'm going to butcher again this quote, <laughs> but she said something about, um, it's not about ignoring it or making it go away. It's about learning how to yes. integrate it into your life and not let yep. it control you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And adding to that, it is about integrating and learning to accept it and live with it and being okay with when you can't do that. I had an instance, uh, I don't know, like a month ago now where, cause I get, I get panic attacks frequently. Um, and they are something that like I have learned to just like 
not accept fully, but I've learned to be able to function through them. Mm -hmm. Um, And right after the Tony nominations came out, it was a very stressful time. It still is. Um, I had a panic attack right as the show was starting. And that's happened to me before um, where a panic attack has like come on quickly during a show. And I've been able to like breathe and work my way through it. And it's been great. But for this time it started and I thought I was okay. thought I was okay. thought I was okay. And then Halfway through Act 2, I realized I am not okay and I cannot keep going and I need to stop. And so I called out one number into Act 2 because Hmm. I listened to my body and it said, you cannot do this right now. And that in itself is like accepting and living with it, you know, and figuring it out. Like, yeah, it just, it's an ever changing thing that like living with it is important and learning how to accept it into your life because if you try to fight it that you you will never succeed right (laughs) ever right (laughs) so you just kind of have to learn to accept it and say okay this is what's going on right now i'm gonna do my best to handle it and we'll see what that means and like that day it meant that i needed to stop yeah what happens what happens during the show did they stop the show they did they stopped the show and they switched me out with my understudy and she is the most amazing human in the world. And she stepped in with like grace and poise that I did not have at that moment. <laughs> um, and she killed it. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that, well, good. Yeah. Good for both of you. <laughs> um, how much of, uh, we, we talked about like, you have to put yourself into the roles and the, and the audience has a hard time differentiating, mm-hmm. but how much of the character is reflected back on you? How much do you walk away with? And are you two the same people now that you were, before the prom? Hmm. Emma has taught me so much. Um, I'm a much, I think it's hard to believe based on (laughs) every self-deprecating thing I have said today, but I'm a much more confident human being because of Emma. Um, And I have a much easier time speaking my mind and standing up for myself and my own rights because of the way Emma stands up for herself in the show. And like, I, I was not that way four years ago at all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think for me, it's kind of the opposite in the sense that Alyssa is so much of who I was um, that I know deeply what it feels like to need to be the best in everything and to succeed at everything and make sure that the people around you are happy. Like a dog, like a dog that you just want to please everyone. You do want to do your tricks, you get your treats and just um, you lose sight of yourself. And I, for a long time, lost sight of who I was uh, and what I actually wanted because I thought I had to be something in order for people to like me. And I put my worth in other people and how they viewed me. So that was a huge shift, wake up call for me that happened like three or four years ago. Um, so in that sense, I it, the show almost feels like regressing a little bit. So I need to find balance outside of it to make sure that I am the strong, confident person I am outside. And luckily, Alyssa has a great arc where she does, you know, c- does come to terms with who she is and fights for her soul and the person she loves, despite the fact that it will hurt her mother. Mm-hmm. And that's something I'm learning too. Actually, now I've been dealing with this in my life is this past year, my Mary Antonini very smart woman. I was talking to her um, about a relationship I was in and um, I, I was just like so wrought up and like, I just, I just, oh, I, do, I hate hurting people. I don't want to hurt anyone. And she, she said, that's a lovely sentiment, but like, you can't go through life without hurting people. It's, you know, it's a fact of life that just happens. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that is something that I've been grappling with this year. And I think Alyssa grapples with too. Mm-hmm. Um, so I feel like we're kind of parallel, like going side to side by side in that sense, like fighting our demons and fighting our desires to please people so much. Um, and I'm grateful I get to work through it as she does. And also remember that, like, it's a good reminder every night that like, you're not what people make you out to be or want you to be. You are your own person. So I think that's. Sounds like good theater is really therapy in its own way. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because you get to you get to repeat and repeat and repeat and try different things. Yeah. Which even though the words are written on the page, if you know your your co-star is everybody else on stage is in the moment reacting, 
it's going to be different. <laughs> yeah. And I yeah. think, yeah, I think it's a beautiful thing. Um, yeah, how, you're talking about relationships. Are, are How do you identify? Figuring it out, <laughs> Figuring it out. over yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have only ever been in relationships with men. However, I have had relations with women. So I, I'm... I, d- I guess I identify as a straight ally, but I'm open to, I, 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 I it's very wishy. I just, I'm attracted to women. I'm attracted to men, but I've only ever been in relationships with men. That's fluid. Fluid, I guess. Yeah. 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 And I had only ever, and then kind of similarly, I had only ever identified as a straight ally, had had relations with women and then recently had started dating a woman um, and it was lovely. And so I'm in this boat of like, I don't, I identify as bi. I don't identify as straight. I don't identify as queer. I yeah. just am kind of, I think who was, um, who's talking about it? There was some BuzzFeed article or something I read. Um, uh, Anton from Anthony. Qu- Anthony. Yes. From I'm so behind on any pop culture references <laughs> ever. Um, he was talking about having dated women and men and how his sexuality is truly fluid. And that like really resonated with me that it's like, no, I don't, I don't need to identify as anything. I am a person who like deals with what comes at me when it comes at me. And like, whether or not I end up with a man or a woman or whatever, it doesn't matter. It's, it just is what it is. Fluidity. It's, yeah. Sexuality is a spectrum, and yeah. I'm somewhere floating around right. all of it. I agree with all of that. I think it's hard. <laughs> like I, I hesitate to claim the identity of, uh, yeah. or, or you know, bisexual identity because I haven't had to face the oppression. Yeah, that so many of Same. the gay culture uh, people in the gay culture it's have. Been so interesting, like this, because it's June and it is Pride Month, and all of these people who are like posting and talking about their pride and the struggles that they have faced coming out. Mm -hmm. It's like, I am a white straight presenting woman. I have never had to go through any of that. I am very privileged for that. And so to identify as bi or queer, I feel like is a disservice in some way because I don't want to claim that I have struggled at all yeah. in this front. Yeah. I've struggled with other things in my life, but never have I faced oppression based on my sexual preferences. Hmm. And so I don't ever want people to assume that I have and then right. say that like I'm We're claiming, claiming false pride. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That, yeah. And I think this is a conversation that we have constantly, the two yeah. of us talk about um, because it is evolving and we are evolving in it. And yeah. it's, you don't want to ruffle any feathers. Yeah, and again, it comes back to like the platform that we are on in social media right now that there are all uh, of these people looking at us and it's like, I don't, I have never wanted to put words into the mouths of those LGBTQ plus people Mm -hmm. who come and see the show and feel seen by it. Like that has never been my intention, but Mm -hmm. I am trying to like figure out my own sexuality and yeah. what it, again, whether and tell the story as yeah. truthfully and respectfully as we can in the mm-hmm. parts that we have. Yeah. Um, and all of that being said, it, it also doesn't matter, you know, like it, it, that's my, like love who you want to love. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. As long as you are not hurting people, you're fine. So do what you want to do. <laughs> yeah. Love is love. Mm-hmm. Exactly. To quote the great Lynn manuel Lynn manuel all right, so we are going to wrap up here. And so my three standard questions oh, okay. that I ask everybody. Uh, Izzy, let's start with you. Mm. What motivates you? Oh, God. Oh, my... Mm. Oh, I want to <coughs> say, this is, sounds so stupid, but it's my thirst for knowledge, like of things I don't know. Like I'm really That's curious. So- that's like so accurate. Yeah, I know. It's you like know, cheesy, but it's like but actually like coming true. from you, it's not cheesy like, at all. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm glad. Thank you for backing that up. Like I, <laughs> I, I, I read a lot of books and I want to do a lot of traveling and I like, I just, I, I want to, I want to keep learning about things I don't know. From and an outsider's perspective, that is so your authentic self thank and you. what you present to the world. Thank you. And that's why I love acting because I'm stepping into shoes of people that I don't know. And like I get to figure that out through them. Yeah. So that's, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my answer, I guess. Yes. Caitlin, what about you? 
the face she's making right now, just pressed up against the mic with a blank stare. Um, she's had time to think about this too. I know, and it just—it's <laughs> not going well. Um, I think um, right now, and having um, in this show's journey, it my whole like outlook on life and everything is using my voice for good and doing things that make a difference in the world, whether it is small change or large change. That's what it's like driving me forward right now. It's just trying to be a good person. It's, it's hard sometimes, <laughs> but I'm working on it. You got this. You got it. You got, you, it. You got, you got this. Got it. All right, so Caitlin, we'll start with you for the oh, second no. one here. Oh no! <laughs> what advice would you give to your younger self and younger oh, younger God. people now, starting out down a similar path? Just keep going. Um, it sounds really simple, but it's actually really hard. Um, just always put one foot in front of the other, and don't give up, and don't pay attention to what other people say. Keep going. Easy. Uh, I'm going to go back to don't compare yourself to other people. It's not worth it. It causes a lot more heartbreak. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just focus on staying in your lane and what makes you you. All right. And okay, so e- either of you can go first on this <laughs> last one. If you could only see one show for the oh, rest God. of your life. Oh, no. But you can see it as many times uh, as you a, want. A theater show? Any any show. Like a TV show too? Any show. Any show. If you just, like, this is your... It for the rest of my life. For the rest of your hell. I was going to say personal hell, but if you want to see the only it, thing you can watch the for the rest thing. of your life. Uh, I can. I, I know this. Because the Office. <laughs> the American Office. All nine seasons are fine with me. I think it is an incredible ensemble cast with the best writing. <laughs> and Chloe is making fun of me because I've never looked so oh. distraught in my life. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, I think that's my go-to just because that is this show I go back to always when I want something in the background or feel like I need to pick me up because I think the, the cast is so diverse and the perspectives are so diverse and it's just so raw and funny and painful like life is. So the office. I'm taking this question way too seriously. Um, that's no. Chris Sieber um, had an existential moment where he wanted to see the prom over and over again, but with him in it, knowing that he could never oh, do it. That's really He creepy. kind of, like, I saw the springs and the smoke start coming out of his ears. <laughs> um, oh, damn it. Um, dun, dun, I know, dun, this is dun, bad. Dun, 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 dun. No, I just want to like let you get through the whole song. It's Jeopardy. Um, she watch Jeopardy. <laughs> my roommate would. My roommate one hundred percent would pick Jeopardy. Show. Watching her watch Jeopardy is the best thing in the world. Um, <laughs> I would watch. Um, can it be like a general statement? I would just watch like really crappy reality TV for the rest <laughs> of like my life. Like The Hills or like Bachelor? No, no, no. Like I'm talking like botched and like naked and afraid. Oh my god. <laughs> you too. Are in now almost 40 episodes. The only two have never picked a theater show. Really? We're, yeah. Oh. So well, con- if I picked a theater yeah. show, it would be Phantom of the Opera. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. I'm obsessed with it. I don't understand how anyone can sing that high. with me one You. We're professionals, guys. <laughs> Tony Award nominee. Yeah, baby. <laughs> That's my favorite thing to say now whenever I like pick a wedgie or like fart or like any like bodily function. Like Tony Award nominee. <laughs> Picking my wedgie. <laughs> well, that title will never leave you. You no. were always going to be Tony nominee, Caitlin Kinnanen. It's pretty cool. Picking yeah. your wedgie. Picking your wedgie, yeah. burping and farting. So anyway, if, bye. <laughs> anyway, Izzy, Izzy, where can we where can we find you on the socials? You can follow me at Izzy McCalla, I Z Z Y M C C A L L A on Instagram. I don't tweet, but Instagram, I will be there. Facebook? Uh, no. Yeah, kids, kids these days aren't into the Facebook. No, I I kind of deleted mine because it was giving me anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> it was. 
See, and I, Facebook was giving me anxiety, but instead of deleting it, I just moved it further away on my phone so it's harder to get to. You have to do two swipes instead of one. I have to do one. three swipes, open a folder, and then click on Facebook to get to Facebook. <laughs> it hasn't stopped me from using it at all. <laughs> But that was what my therapist and I came up with. It's a good compromise. <laughs> All right. <laughs> where, can we find, where can we find you? You can find me on Instagram at Caitlin.Kinnanen, C-A-I-T-L-I-N dot K-I-N-N-U-N-E-N. That's me. And that's the only place that I publicly say anything. I have Facebook and Twitter, but they are private so I can stalk people. Look <laughs> private. All right. You can get more of me at the theaterpodcast.com, theater underscore podcast on Instagram and Twitter, or Facebook slash a theater, blah, 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 Facebook slash official theater podcast. <laughs> what are they, a, a fiddle of our podcast? Of course, leave a rating if you're listening on a player right now. It helps. This is produced by Jillian Hockman, edited by Matthew Hendershot. And thank you to Jukebox the Ghost for the intro and outro music. Caitlin yes. and Izzy, this has been so much fun. Yeah, yeah. thanks for having us. I appreciate us. it. This is great. Always. Yeah. Always? Yeah, yeah. Always. Always. Stop ASMR. it. That's the last. ASMR outro. No. I don't condone any of this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Colorful.